and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the Books and welcome to the first day of February. So today is the first day of February which is a month um, during which I am reading and watching and listening to and just consuming loads of content, content, content that celebrates women and empowers women and I'm just having a lovely lovely time doing so. I mean I haven't even started but I've had a wonderful time sorting out my TBR and things like that. I'll link my TBR down below. I've got a really itchy foot, a right one. My right foot, does that mean I'm going on a journey? That sort of thing. Does, is an old wives tales mean that? Um, but today um, before we get into all the um, February content. I have got my February, uh, my January um, favourites to celebrate. So what I've done here, I've collated a lot of January favourites. There was quite a lot of stuff that was to do with the fact that I took part in Veganuary, um, which is where I went February, Veganuary, what on earth am I going to do in March? Um, where I took part in um, a scheme which is run um, worldwide where um, you pledge to become a vegan for the month of January. And I discovered quite a lot of things that I enjoyed um, during in the month of Veganuary um, that are vegan so I thought I'd probably maybe uh, when March comes around make a vegan vegan favorites video um, otherwise this whole month was uh, gonna be sort of lots of different foods and things so I thought that would be cool to do that and then it would also give me a bit more time to get to know veganism a little bit more so I will be doing a sort of vegan favorites video later on but blah 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 what did you like in January tell me um, I'll start with the things that I've got here so here I have on a lovely roll neck jumper yellow with like sort of this sort of what would you even call that I don't know, like patterning um, from Sainsbury's. Now, Sainsbury's jumper game at the moment is strong as. I don't do much high street shopping. So long gone are the days where I used to trot down to the high street every Saturday and end up buying stuff. Now, all of my shopping is basically done in Tesco's and Sainsbury's, which are two supermarkets that I visit on a weekly basis um, to do my food shopping. But their jumper, so uh, Sainsbury's clothes, I feel really, really impressed with. They're, they're really well made and they're really well priced. They're not like super, super cheap, but they are well made and they last me a lot longer. So this jumper here was £22. All the jumpers that I'm going to show you are £22. So I've got this one. I've also got like a burnt orange one that I've worn in other videos. That was also, I think that was 20 No, it was, that was 20 but it was it was 25% off, so it's £15. I've also got this gorgeous number. So these are what I wore at the weekend to keep myself warm. Um, this is lovely and it's got like a little, I think that's called like a funnel neck. So it's not like a roll neck like this, but it comes up here. That, they are both so, so so that's lovely and like a big leopard print and then this guy um, which is green and is a roll neck and it's slightly cropped not super cropped but just slightly cropped and it's got like these tassely arms and again this is just so so soft for 22 pounds I've been loving it and I really really love like bold colors um, and I'm gonna take really good care of these because before just sort of like flung jumpers in with the rest of me washing and they've gone misshapen and I'm gonna be take really good care and I'm also Gonna try not to wash them too much because I feel like that is the sort of thing that makes my jumpers go mis misshapen. So Sainsbury's, wonderful, wonderful jumper situation going on in Sainsbury's at the moment. Uh, next thing, I'll do some, I'll, I'll show you something that um, comes from like really, really early at the beginning of the month and that is Seedlip. Um, so <clears throat> I got the, the kind people at Seedlip wonderfully sent me this um, this non-alcoholic spirit um, to enjoy over Christmas. I finished it on New Year's Eve which was probably New Year's Day because I was drinking it into New Year's Day. So it still counts as a January favourite. And I couldn't believe that I didn't mention it in my favourites for December because I just bloody loved it so much. So it's a distilled non-alcoholic spirit. They do this sort of winter one, which is called Spice 94, um, which has got a really... And also the bottles are just gorgeous. I mean, look at that little foxy guy. Um, and then they've got like a summery one, which is like pea and like pea and mint based maybe, which has got a bunny rabbit on the front. Um, and I was just loving it. They sent me these with some amazing, uh, with some fever tree tonic water as well. Um, and I'd never tried fever tree tonic water. It just went beautifully. And because I'm a non-drinker, um, I always say I never ever miss drinking, ever. But I always feel a bit left out at Christmas when everyone's drinking loads of fabulous drinks. And I'm sort of like sipping on, because uh, I don't drink caffeine either. So I'm sort of like drinking lemonade <laughs> or like fruit juice, which I drink all year round. So this was a real, real treat. I think these bottles, I think they're about £30. Although I did see that they're on offer in Tesco's at the moment because it's been dry January. 
although this will be February now, um, I feel like they were down to about £20, but I really, really recommend it. They were some gorgeous, gorgeous drinks, and I loved it, and they've also got some really, really nice cocktails and things on the website, which I'll link down below, um, but I would definitely, definitely be buying myself one of the, the summery ones in the summer, and I'll be buying another one of these for myself next Christmas as well. So yeah, expensive, but a lovely, lovely treat, and definitely something that I will be treating myself to again. Um, then I've also got, so this is like part two of something that I showed you in my December favourites. So in my December favourites I showed you the Europe version of Map Ominos, which is an amazing, amazing game of dominoes where you've got cards which are countries um, in Europe and you have to sort of make a domino board um, using them. And we went a little step further and bought the UK edition. <laughs> so um, I also bought the UK edition, which is hardcore. This has got like almost a hundred page a uh, hundred different cards because it's got all the uh, counties um in the in the uk so in england northern ireland scotland and wales and it just takes you need a really bloody big table we've only played it twice we played it once with my friend emma um and then we played it with simon and chris when we went to visit them mini you could be a naughty girl uh, simon and chris when we went to visit them and Simon and Chris have got a very big table, but David and I haven't, so we, we didn't really, we basically got Scotland done when we played it here, but really, really love this. Minnie, you've been a kitty kitty girl. She's so tangly at the moment, we need to get, we need to get you cut, don't we? Um, and then the last thing I've got to show you, before I start talking about other bits, is my bath plank. So I got this um, off of my sister for Christmas, and I've been having some really high-end bloody good baths. I will insert a picture um, of myself, of, of myself, no it's not of myself, of me using this bath plank, but I don't know where she got this one from. It was, I, I know it was online, but I've seen them in sort of like Dunelm, I'm sure you could get them like, search bath plank and it'll come up. But, you pop this over your bath, I'm explaining it like you've never seen one of these before and then I just have sort of like a cup of tea, I can pop my book on there if I want any snacks, although I'm not entirely into eating in the bath, um, a candle and it's just really fun to have like that extra shelf and extra fun. I've seen photos of people using these with laptops on. No, 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 no. I could not be trusted with a laptop in the bath. There is no way I could be trusted. But yeah, I've really, really been enjoying it. And I feel like it's a really good gift. So if someone's like looking to buy someone they know that enjoys a bath, obviously if they haven't got a bath or don't enjoy a bath, it's not a very good gift. But like if someone loves a bath, then this is like the next step in bathing. Um, and it's really, really fun. And I, I absolutely loved it. And then I guess these weren't even on my list, but I bought these at the weekend. Um, David bought one and I bought the other. And they're um, rolled doll pillows. So this is the fantastic Mr. Fox one that David bought. And then I also got, these were 12 99 in HomeSense, which is a, a place I'd never been before until this weekend. I got this Matilda one, um, which is super duper cute. So yeah, so um, they're just some few few bits that I've got here. So anyway, uh, things that I've been doing this month. So things, well, not so much things that I've been doing, but things I don't have. So something I finished watching this month, which I started watching in December, and I really, really drip fed it to myself because I wanted it to last a long time was The Crown. So the second series of The Crown was on um, and this um, charts um, Queen Elizabeth II who is the queen we have at the moment, her reign. Um, I can't quite rem <clears throat> recall when the second series starts. It starts when they're having marital difficulties but I can't really sort of give you a year of which that happens but you follow sort of like um, her second, her two, her last two pregnancies, and um, uh, Margaret meeting her husband and things like that. It is amazing. Like I didn't really know I was, I, I cared that much. Not that I care that much, but I didn't really know so much about the Queen. For me, she's just been sort of like a figurehead of like being there, and that's it. I never really knew anything about her history, and. Um, it's sort of like the, the the scandal and the gossip that happens um, in in Buckingham Palace and around like their marriage and around her sister and and her parents and like really really good and so well acted. Claire Foy, who plays Elizabeth, is amazing. Matt Smith, who plays um, Prince Philip, is literally like more like Prince Philip than I think Prince Philip is. <laughs> could be I feel like if I was to look at a picture of Prince Philip from 50 years ago and not see Matt Smith I'd be I'd be disappointed <laughs> that's how much I feel like he's like it um but it is amazing and if you're if you haven't watched it yet and I'm sure like the whole bloody world has watched it then really really treat yourself to it and and give it a few episodes and like what I always like to do is when I was watching it I'd always I'd always sort of be like googling things that were going on I was like that can't have really happened and it all did bloody happen um but yeah I absolutely loved it and I really really am raging 
like really keen for everyone ever to watch it my mum and dad haven't got netflix and they're going for a netflix trial i think um and i was like you must watch that and i've just been telling everyone to watch it but absolutely loved it and the second series was so sexy as well loads and loads of sex in it but very very much enjoyed that um what else have i been enjoying oh I have been on two, there's two booktubey things that I've done this month that I've really, really loved. Um, the first one was that I um, I went to East London with uh, Lauren from uh, Reads and Daydreams, the booktube channel Reads and Daydreams. We had a lovely, lovely day. It was really, really lovely in East London visiting all these like really cool hipstery places and just walking around. Um, she does a series on her channel where she does walks in London um, and then sort of like plots them out so you can see below and she gives like, she knew so many like little, um, like bits of uh, like, what am I thinking of? Like little snippets of information about um, Jack the Ripper and, and the, the places we were. And it was just really lovely. It was really nice to catch up with her because I've met Lauren a number of times. We've always been like as a part of a big group. So it was really, really nice to just be the two of us just walking around. We went to um, Cereal Killer, which is a cafe, that's, a cafe that serves cereal, like as in breakfast cereal um, on Brick Lane. And we also went to like really cool um, food market and like really, really nice bookshops and just had a lovely, lovely day. I will link the video down below. Um, there's a bit in it that makes me laugh like when I watched it, it was, I was laughing loads at the time it happened, but since I've watched it, it's really made me laugh again. Um, we were walking down this little alleyway and an alarm went off and Lauren actually managed to capture on camera the alarm going off and our faces and we're both so shocked. And it made me jump even, the, even though I knew it was coming, it made me jump the second time around. So that's one booktube thing that I've loved doing. And then the weekend just gone, David and I went up to visit Simon from Savage Reads and his fiance Chris. Um, and we went like, like a year ago the weekend before so it's been a year since we've been to see them um, and when we went before they just moved into their beautiful house in the Wirral um, and it is just gorgeous and they're just such good hosts and we just had such a fun time and we did all sorts of wonderful things now David has vlogged it whether or not that'll be up yet Simon has also vlogged it so I'll definitely link Simon's video down below and when David's video of the vlog comes up I will link that down below as well but we had an amazing time we went to Formby and saw some red squirrels which like you can't really see in the UK anymore um, and then this, we went to an amazing beach. Um, we went to a home sense, as I said. We had a lovely meal out. We stayed in, we chilled out. We just had a really, really nice time just like chatting and just catching up. And it was just wonderful. And we went up on the Friday night and came back on the Monday. So we had two full days. And it was just beautiful just to spend such a lovely amount of time um, with some wonderful people. And BookTube's just so great, isn't it? That I get to make these wonderful friends with people that I wouldn't have met otherwise. So amazing. I also came home with 26 books. Um, <clears throat> so I'll be filming a haul of the books that I came home um from simon's with um shortly so he was very kind like he was getting rid of quite a lot of books and i was like yeah i love those um so yeah i've got quite a lot to show you in terms of books so yeah two things that i've done um and then the oh no i'll leave i, I normally start with my favorite book i'll leave my favorite book till last because it has been like one of my favorite books ever like i absolutely loved it so the two last things so one thing i've been listening to is i've been listening to women's hour women's hour on radio 4 and also listening to the podcast if i don't manage to tune into the radio show so the radio show is on radio 4 between 10 and 10 45 and then they have like a 15 minute drama for the last 15 minutes and i've been really trying to listen to this at work um it doesn't always happen because sometimes i forget i don't really like working with the radio one because i'm on the phone i share an office with another um woman and we're both on the phone we have people in and out and things like that but if I can sort of get 45 minutes of women's hour in, um, then that's wonderful. But if I don't manage to listen to it, there's a daily podcast that comes out every day and I always sort of catch up with it the next day. And it's just such amazing, like topical things about women. Like I was listening to um, it today and it was talking about um, women's prisons and what happens to children when their mother goes to prison. And there's been a whole uh, section, although it didn't really have much uh, to do, like it doesn't appeal to me, not appeal to me, but doesn't matter to me at my point in my life, but they had a menopause week and, and um, they just really talk about like hard women's issues. And um, there's been a lot about the gender pay gap recently and it's just been very informative and really, really impressive. So if anyone's looking for some, um, some podcasting to be doing because I feel like at the moment all my favorite podcasts are on hiatus I don't know whether it's like they've taken January off um but my my podcast feed was looking very bare um and I knew that I used to be subscribed to women's women's hour but it always got a bit out of hand because there's a podcast every day and two on a Wednesday um 
and including one at the weekend as well, um, it all just got a bit out of hand. So I'd, I'd sort of like miss a week and then there'd be like a thousand podcasts on there. But I'm very much good at keeping up with the ones that I've listened to live and things like that. So really, really would recommend that. And then the last thing I've done, which I guess works in, like links in a bit with Women's Hour, is I've set up a women's only running club with some friends and um, people that live in my local area. So I wanted, I used to be a runner. <laughs> an overstatement i used to go running with a running club that cost me like 18 pounds a month it was twice a, it was twice a week a monday and a thursday and um although like i think they made me realize that i was a bit better at running than i thought like basically i needed to build it up and i always sort of went on one run couldn't run for more than 30 seconds no lie and was like i'm not a runner blah 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 and that club i guess taught me that by building it up i can do it um but for me it was just a bit not so much full on but like i i wanted to go at my own pace i didn't want to go at the pace of everyone else so like for me it didn't work out um however i did get to the point where i was running for a 20 minute stint which is something that i never even in my wildest dreams thought i could happen honestly when i first started running i couldn't even run like 10 seconds it was so so hard um so i knew i could do it um so i quit the running club and also it's just costing me like 18 pound a month to go out running on the roads just seems a bit pfft. and then i thought i would love to start running again because i know i can do it i would like to but the weather's really bad, it's really dark, I wouldn't feel safe going out just one person by myself. So I put something on my Facebook and just said to the people that live around me, is anyone interested in um, starting a, a, a running club? And um, I got like quite a few people come back to me and said they were. So we meet once a week, we go for an hour. Um, we started off by walking um, and we've got sort of like, we're in a park which has got quite a good um, like lap system. So we started off by walking and then but gradually building it up. So we'd like run one little width of it. And then the next, and then last week we were running both widths and the, the lengths um, we were walking. And then this week we're gonna sort of run one of the lengths. And, and it's just been really, really fun. And it's just a bit a whole mix of people. Like my mum goes, like one of my mum's friends goes, my sister goes, one of my sisters as friends goes um like just a whole mix of women um who are all different stages like some people just ran from the first week which is completely fine but we're all in one place running and exercising together and i just feel really super proud that i that's something that i set up um so we have like a, about we've had 15 people went at the most and then we've had sort of like 12 and 8 people go the weather has been crap um but people have been still going so i've been really really pleased and really proud of myself that that's something i'd set up and um that is going to be something that i am doing all the time so yeah that's gonna onwards 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 and it'll be nice when it gets a bit lighter as well and a bit less cold um so that feels very exciting and just off the back of that something i did i um i did a park run so um park run is a scheme that runs um uh, nationwide i believe it's a free um 5k run um every saturday and you can just go and join in and my sister and her husband have been doing it for years and i know a few other people who have done it and um, i always said i'd do it and i thought oh, i'm just gonna bloody do it and me and my friend emma and um some other of the guys that come to um running club um went went along and we had a great time it was really really rainy and i almost didn't go and it was so slippery um but i'm so pleased i did it i didn't run like the whole thing at all like i i don't know when i'll get to the point where i can run 5k like the whole way but um i didn't stop at any point i walked i power walked even though it was so slippery like there was places where i just couldn't have run because it was so so slippery but um that's something that i'm definitely going to be doing more and more of so really really enjoyed that and like that as a scheme if you live in the uk i'm absolutely certain that you will have a park run nearby to you um that you can that you can go to and, and run a 5k for free which is amazing so so that is that so that's all of the stuff apart from my favorite book so i sort of hinted earlier at like this book that i've read the book that I've read um, being one of my favourite books ever and that is Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine um, by Gail Honeyman um, this book I sort of went into I listened to the audiobook of it which is amazingly done um, I'll find out who it is um, narrated by uh, it's narrated by Kathleen McCarran um, and I sort of went into this book um, not really knowing much about it um, and I feel like if you haven't read it then that's probably the best way to go about it and, and I spoke about this um, briefly in my currently reading um, halfway through January so if you want to go away for a bit and, and if, if you want to come to Eleanor Oliphant completely not knowing anything about it in the way that I did then go away and I'll say this when you can come back um, but yeah to so go away <laughs> So Eleanor Oliphant is a book about a woman, um, Eleanor, who has lived a very solitary life. Um, uh, you, you believe through her own choosing. Um, she seems to be, she's, she's very... Um, uh, unique person and um she sort of you, you see that she seems to be 
getting on in her life um, fine by herself when really and, and, and it opens with this um, bikini wax she's going for and it all seems very ha 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 and la 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 and I was thinking oh this is going to be a bit like Bridget Jones um, and as you go in deeper into the story you realise that um, Eleanor is a really really lonely um, person with a really big heart that she hasn't been able to share much of her life with she um, something awful happened to her when she was younger which you learn more about as the as the story goes on and she's working um, in administration in an office job and she she sort of goes to that and and then she'll go home on a Friday night and not speak to anyone until Monday morning and um, and it's just like there was parts of it that was so heartbreakingly sad um, that I was actually crying and then there's also parts of it where Eleanor says something and she says something so profound and so real um, and in such a sort of like clean cut way that it really hit me like oh so there's a part where um Eleanor becomes friendly with um one of the chaps that works in the office in the IT department Raymond um and they've got such a gorgeous friendship and this like it just the whole book for me was just a wonderful wonderful um like study on friendship as well like although it's like it's it's there's really really low parts in that book but there's also really really high parts as well and Eleanor and um, Raymond are out for lunch at somewhere they go uh, where they regularly go um and I'm smiling because like the way she the, the way she felt when she realized that she's got somewhere that she regularly goes with a friend was just amazing um and there's a chap working um at this um this cafe that they go to and he's having to quit work because his wife um has I believe it's bowel cancer but it's um it's terminal and she's not she's not going to recover from this so he's taking time off work um to go and spend time with her and there's a there's a part of it where she's uh, where um where Eleanor who just speaks her mind and she always has done because she's never really been around people so she's not very it's not that I wouldn't say she's well socialized but she's just she just she says whatever comes into her head and she says oh well I guess you'd rather be at home with your dying wife rather than here serving me a cappuccino and the guy who she's serving is just sort of like yeah yeah I, I would and it was just so like oh god like sometimes people say things that are so true and like she she really felt for him and she was she was so sad for him and it was a real thing that she'd learned to do in her life and it was just I really really loved it and I feel like Eleanor's gonna stay with me for a really really long time and quite a few people I know have read this or I've bought it for them I bought it for quite a few people at Christmas um, and I would just talk about that book to anyone that will listen because I've just been loving it so so much so Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine um, if five stars like one of my favorite books ever um, and I think it's gonna be hard to beat this year if that's going to be topped but absolutely loved it and I feel like it's going to be a book that will stay with me forever so yeah hopefully you guys will go ahead and read it come back come back now come back now um but yeah hopefully um a few people will go and read Eleanor Oliphant but I really would recommend the audiobook it's narrated by um as I said Kathleen McCarran and um it's set in Glasgow and everyone is um Scottish um apart from Eleanor um and she does a really good voice I mean she might not I'm not Scottish myself but she does a really good um job of like differentiating between the accents and things like that so I really enjoyed it so read it or listen to the audiobook both are amazing so yeah that was my January it's a really really lovely month really really lovely January I quite like January in terms of um sort of like new starts and things like that I can't believe how quick it's gone everyone else was saying to me they feel like it's really dragged but I feel like I can't believe it's February um so yeah as I said February is February I'm going to be reading and celebrating um women and just having a wonderful wonderful time um please let me know if you're joining in and let me know if any of these favourites are something that you've been involved in before. Been involved in before. If, if these are something that you've enjoyed before. And I will see you all again soon for another booktube video. Goodbye.